can go and record. Alright, so we are going to have to pack a cord using a refraction cord packer. Before we pack the cord, we are going to soak it in. Uh, uh, sleep? No, in the solution of uh, hemostatic agent. This is the adhesive, not the hemostatic agent. Hemostatic agent, yes. This is your Bleed. hemostatic agent. What does the hemostat do? Hemo stat stops the bleeding. Yeah. All right. It also slightly reduces the GCF in the. So now uh, we soak this in this hemostat. We take a little bit in the day dish, We soak it and then we pack the cord. Mm -hmm. Which side do I start packing? From the proximal. proximal. From the proximal. Why from the proximal? Your facial and lingual. I've already mentioned this before, by the way, in the lecture. Your facial and lingual uh, pre-gingival tissue, right, is very closely adapted to the tooth. And if you're going to try to push this cord into that, alright, so when you're going to place it, you're trying to push it into the facial and lingual side, it's going to be very difficult to get access and you may injure the tissue. On the proximal side, you have the interdental papilla. You can easily push it and get access and bad, you'll start moving. While I'm packing the cord, I will keep the cord packer in the direction of the cord that is already packed, not like this. If I keep it like this and I push it, what I pack will come outside. Basic physics. Alright? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep it angulated like this and I'm going to pack the cord as I go. Okay? And that's how I, I move all the way around the tooth. From my starting point, I go all the way around. I never poke it like this because if I poke it like this, this one will come outside. Alright. Now once I place this cord, how long will I keep it inside the sulcus? Now, the hemostat causes vasoconstriction, peripheral vasoconstriction causes less blood, less GCF. The area is dry. If I start pulling this cord out, what will happen? Injury. It will start bleeding, exactly. You get a little injured, it will start bleeding. So what I'm supposed to do at this point, take the uh, water syringe, just drop two drops of water on the uh, cord. It will soak it up, then slowly pull it out. When you're pulling it out, you use a tweezer, you're pulling it out, you don't pull it like as if you're sorry, like you're starting a, a speedboat or something. You hold it like this and you gently work your way all the way around, gently pulling it outside. Once you have pulled it outside, what's the next step? All right. So we have a high, uh, we have a moist area. We're going to dry it with air, and now we're going, we're ready for our impression. Now for the impression, the technique that you're going to be following is the uh, one-step double mix, which means to say one. One time we put the material and we're going to make the impression. But we're going to use two consistencies, two different consistencies. We have a light viscosity and we have, a, in this case, we have a heavy viscosity. All right, light body, heavy body. Which one do you think we're going to inject on the tooth? No, it's uh, light. light. Yes, exactly. The light viscosity is going to go onto the tooth structure. And the heavy viscosity is going to go in your. Three. In this technique, you need four handed dentistry. You're going to have an assistant and you're going to be a clinician. You're going to have one. The clinician always works on the tooth and the assistant works on the, uh, on the custom tray. Now, a couple of things that you need to know could I have? What are the dispensing tips? Yes. You have different types of tips. Just for you to pay attention to these two, you have two different thickness bores for the tip, a thicker one and a thinner one. Where do you think the thicker one will be going on to? The heavy one. Because you're going to have to dispense more material in the same amount of time that the clinician is going to have to dispense around the two. Alright? This one comes, this is. This can be detached. Okay? This one comes with a, a finer nozzle so that you can concentrate the material at the finish line and you have just retracted the tissue. So you want to inject in the sulcus, the gingival sulcus. All right, so this tip will help you dispense the material dispense there. Dispense a little bit of the material onto the tissue paper so that you know both of them are giving the equal quantity. How you can inject. Now, many people make the mistake of injecting like this on the proximal surface. All right, what happens with injecting like this is you may incorporate an air bubble on I the I always hold this at an angle sideways. So now when I'm injecting, now suppose my patient is sitting like this, Okay, I'm going to inject this material. While I'm injecting it, the material flows from here to that side. So whatever air is there in the proximal, it gets pushed. It's like a river flowing. Okay, so the material flows through. It comes to the lingual side. So once I'm sure of that material coming to the lingual side, I will keep injecting along here. I come here. 
and I again inject the material. So once I inject it, I see it coming from the lingual side, then I bring it to this side and I inject along the finish line here. Finish line is extremely important. Not that the others aren't, it is, it is important, but that is extremely important. Never take it away and Paint inject. It on, then start painting the axial walls, all the axial walls, the occlusal aspect, but keep it in touch. The tip should be touching at all times. And then go on to the occlusal aspect of the adjacent teeth and you can stop with that. So by this time, your assistant will be loading the tray. Alright? So it's usually the same time. Now, many times I've seen people, they hold the tray like this because it's very convenient to hold it like this. And then they start injecting like this and they start going like this. Or they start from here and go like this. What happens with doing this, all the material gets stuck here and then it becomes a big mess. Alright? It's much easier to hold it like this or much better to hold it like this. And once you're injecting it, the material does not coat this area. You don't have wastage, plus you don't have a mess. And it comes all the way over here, you inject like this. I will show you how that's done. Now, what are it? the functions of the stops? Stabilizing. The first function is orientation. The next function is stability. stability. When I place this here, it should not rock around, it should not move around. This again helps you with the stop. The third function. Maintain the uh, impression thickness. material. Thickness. Maintain the thickness of the impression, impression material. material. So that's the third function. Right. So the three functions of the stops, stability, right. orientation, and maintaining the thickness of our impression material. Okay? I'm going to start sure. injecting over here. You may notice the way we load the tray, we load it in a continuous uh, way. So we will not find the uh, water bubbles or points. Now you can leave it like this or just yeah, you can also make a small trough just so that you know that that area. Oh, sorry, let me just put this away here. Yeah. You have to be very careful not to drop that on the patient. Now, because of my stops, I don't need to think. I can just place my impression like this and press it down. So my stops are going to have. I can't control where's the orientation now. I can't control anything. I need to just press it. So my stops will come and touch the teeth in those specific points. I have my orientation, I have my stability, it's not moving around, and I have my thickness of my impression. Now, we have a thing called a seating pressure and a holding pressure, or a loading pressure and a holding pressure. The seating pressure is while I was seating it, while I was pressing the tray, I'm the clinician, I was pressing the tray, and I was getting it into its final seated position. All right? Now, after I do the seated position, I don't have to keep pressing it. There's no point. All right? I just need to hold it. And yes, you're going to hold it till the material sets. Now, oh, we had an extraction socket. There. All right. Now, another thing which is very important is, remember your extension for your tray, which was five millimeters away from your gingival sulcus. If you made your tray perfectly, you will have no problem. All you need to do is, you don't have to fear that you're going to cut off your finish line or anything. You're just going to go ahead all the way around cut off this excess. This is a brand new blade, you need to be careful. And I'm going to just cut off all this excess. Hmm. Right? So I have a nice neat uh, impression. The finish line should be recorded in light viscosity. Should be in light viscosity. If the occlusal anatomy is slightly exposed by the heavy, not a problem, but the finish line has to be in light viscosity. There is no two ways about it. Marginal integrity is extremely important. The crown will fail from there first. If you don't maintain marginal integrity. <laughs>